Sweet. So guys, welcome back to the weekly Q and A. Um, my name is Glenn McGoldrick, and last week I was joined by Patrick Brown, and it was more of a general Q and A last week. I think last week the aim was to really just kind of give a broad perspective on where the industry is now, as opposed to going into micro elements of the industry like we are today, where we're going to focus primarily on helping beginner students. Uh, today, or even just beginners barbers, um, and anybody who's I suppose aspiring to become a barber. So, you know, the aim of today is going to be to help you across all levels. We've had some absolutely amazing questions, guys, from uh, Instagram during the week. We had probably over thirty or forty messages from people. So, thank you so much to anyone who did ask a question. But what we've done is we basically picked and um, the best five or six that we're going to answer today that we feel would kind of help you. And the most across the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, how's it going, boys? Just to intro introduce myself quickly, my name is Craig Morty and I'm a director of this salon here at Men's Bar Um Yeah, I'm happy to be joining Glenn today just on this QA. Something that I'm very passionate about is beginners and apprentices kind of getting into the industry. As I've been in the industry for that long, it's something that I think every bar I should be passionate about. It's trying to going to pave the way forward for anybody who's going to be coming into the industry after ourselves you know so I'm really looking forward to answering a couple of questions today mm. yeah and just to mention we're obviously a men's bar coming yeah. yeah which is the latest addition to the the men's bar Ireland chain of salons um, which is something that me and Craig have been working on for seven eight years yeah now, you know? a lot of time yeah um, which which is why I wanted to do this session with Craig because me and Craig started out as apprentices. Yeah, you know? together. Yeah, yeah. In 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 the same shop. So, um, and we've really seen you know the industry grow from where we began barbering to where it is now, and I think we can look back on where it was and 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 take some very strong points from there. Although the industry has developed a lot, I think you know. Since me and Craig have spent that time together, I think we're going to have a lot of value on some of these questions today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just off the back of that as well, I think the way the industry has changed over the last couple of years, and it is definitely for the better now, but I just think that there's some core principles in the way we started a couple of years ago that will kind of always stay as like the roots, I suppose, in mm. our paths and in the industry alone that maybe some people these days won't really understand, but Thankfully, we started off on that path and we kind of, I suppose, grew with the industry as it was being revolutionized. So, yeah, yeah that is true. Yeah, yeah so right. I think there'll be definitely some good points to be given today from myself and Glenn, just to kind of reflect on how we started into how people start now and just trying to fuse them together, you know what I mean? Just to kind of give every beginner and every apprentice a, a good path to start on. Yeah, I think so. Let's crack on, will we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's this get this first one is a banger. <clears throat> okay, so first question, guys, we're going to answer um, is you know, does what, what we've done here is we've basically categorized these questions into certain areas within Barbara that we believe are really strong points in terms of where people need advice. So, we're going to start off quite broad because I think this is a huge thing that I've noticed since teaching beginners and just generally over the last eight years working with a lot of um, apprentices you know we, we've had apprentices in the shops that we run we've worked with apprentices in shops that we've run before and this comes up a lot so this question uh, was asked by Molly Mac 45 and she asked us how long did it take you to feel confident with cutting hair yeah yeah it's a good question to be fair it, I suppose it's something that you can go very broad on as well mm. um, so how long did it take you to feel confident with cutting for me personally, it definitely took a couple of years just from the way I started out personally before I ever got a job. Originally, I was self taught, so I mean, it, it took a couple of years really. Um, my main foundation was kind of just learning from YouTube and stuff like that, which is a much, much slower process. Mm. And in regards to the videos I was watching, the information wasn't great, so a lot of it was trial and error, which makes it such a such a longer path yeah. in terms of where you're gonna or how you're gonna get to feel confident. Mm -hmm. Um so I suppose we starting back then becoming confident was it it was a thing that was gonna take a, a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think now it can 
it can definitely be brought to you a little bit sooner mm -hmm. just through certain resources like education and I suppose just the general um, content that's out there at the minute in terms of even stuff like this for, for, for barbers getting into it, I was nothing like this for myself in Glen years ago, absolutely no. nothing. So no. um, there's definitely a lot of shortcuts these days, but I really do think that confidence is a personal thing as well. Um, if you're a confident person, I think you will be a lot more confident in your abilities. After a little while of cutting hair, I don't think anybody should be too overly confident from day one, but it's definitely a good trade to carry with you. Mm -hmm. um, but off the back of that, I've seen a, a lot of barbers who have been cutting hair for years that still mightn't be as confident as they should be. Even reflecting on their skill sets would be amazing and the confidence just isn't there. Mm -hmm. But then you've got people who are only cutting hair a couple of months, they might be lacking in their skill sets, who actually might be a little bit too overconfident. So mm -hmm. it's really about trying to find that balance. Mm. What do you think? 100%. That last bit, you kind of hit the nail on the head there because, yeah. like, guys, when it, when it comes to, to building confidence, yeah, um, what I find happens a lot of the time is people are searching for confidence without actually taking action upon finding confidence, okay? And what I mean by that is when people initially come into the industry, okay, one of the big things that I've stood by with younger stylists and apprentices is something at, at Men's Sport that we've called the three C's, okay? And it's basically clarity, confidence, and conviction, yeah? So when we think about, you know, somebody who's just coming into the industry, the reason why they're not confident initially is because they've got zero clarity. And that, that can be as broad as you like or as narrow as you like. The broad end of, of, of the spectrum is that they don't know their personal goals in the industry, they don't know their professional goals in the industry, they don't understand technical hair cutting, they don't understand how a salon runs. So if you were to break down all of the different areas within the salon that you have to build confidence in, yeah, that can take you two or three years. There's so many areas that if you were waiting to build clarity on every single one before you got confident, then I think you will be looking at taking a very long time to get to that position. So one thing that we always do, especially with younger staff, is we try and play on their strengths yeah from a very 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 early stage and especially on the uh, beginners program that we have as well you know i've watched uh, the majority of our students become extremely confident within eight to ten weeks now the reason for that is because there's certain areas that we really focus on that we give them tremendous clarity on so much clarity to the point that they feel like they could probably teach it back uh, within a week or two yeah, yeah. And I think that's been revolutionary for, for younger barbers. But my biggest piece of advice would be to double down on the things that you're good at and build as much clarity as you possibly can in as many areas as you can, as fast as you can. Yeah, Because like I said, it's very simple, guys. With clarity comes, comes uh, confidence, and once you have confidence comes conviction. And conviction is what you need to be successful as, as, as a barber. Without conviction, uh, you know, the opposite of, 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 of conviction is doubt, yeah, mm -hmm. when, when we think of it yeah. that way. And being doubtful, even going into a single haircut, can be detrimental, yeah. I remember when, like, you know, five, six years ago, so even when I first went to men's sport, yeah. if I would doubt a haircut just before I started it, nine times out of ten it went wrong. Yeah, yeah? 100%. Uh, which is fascinating because you, you don't understand how much of an impact that your mindset has on such a micro level, such as a haircut, like. mm. but it does, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. You know and I mean? it impacts you all day, really. And then even confidence going forward, obviously into the next haircut, you feel like the one that you've done previous just didn't really didn't, bang for you. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. So yeah. it's just playing on your mind and playing on your mind. So with that, I think obviously what Glenn said with clarity and confidence, conviction is definitely probably the strongest one because I think once once you've got to the conviction side and, and you're yeah. really executing that quite well I, I think that's where the, the true confidence will come from because not only does it impact your technical ability in terms of cutting hair it's gonna it's gonna really impact how you're speaking to your clients you know how you're doing your roles and the duties in the shop you know what sort of employee you will be and in turn what sort of employer you will be so 100%. yeah I think those three key elements are probably one of the strongest things that you could build on from the very early days and yeah. like Glenn said, the sooner you can nail those, the better your career will be. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely.
100%. And I think, guys, as well, like being kind to yourself is very uh, underrated these days. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, I suppose, I suppose, a lack of confidence a lot of the time can can, can stem from your own mind. You mm-hmm. know, and and telling yourself repeatedly that you're not good at certain things. Um, rather than telling yourself you're not good at a certain thing, ask yourself how can you improve on that certain thing. Yeah. Um, because guys, self doubt in this industry can be a killer. It really, really can, and I've seen it happen, you know. But um, yeah, so look, guys, in terms of building confidence, be kind to yourself as well. This mm-hmm. isn't this isn't a, a sprint. This is a marathon, yeah. And and that is how you need to look at it. You know, it's taken me and Craig eight years to get to the point that we're in. It is a slow process, but the way the industry is now, you don't need to spend half as much time doing the things that we had to do to get mm-hmm. to where we are. The resources are endless. They are endless, guys, and you have to have to try and um, take advantage of them. Yeah. Sweet. I, I really enjoyed that question. Yeah, that's a great question. To be fair, because it's something that we see a lot. And look, obviously, like I see it on a daily basis in in, in, in the academy with people starting off in the industry. Yeah. And more often than not, it literally comes down to people not having enough clarity. That's all it is. Mm. You know, um, and maybe not putting enough time into certain topics or subjects. Yeah. Cool. Let's have a look at the next question, guys. So this one is from Mikey Mooney. And new to the industry, due to restrictions, can't put clients now. How do I keep learning? Great question. Good one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, it's funny, me and Craig were on the same this morning in a slightly harsh way that the excuse of the pandemic um, as a lack of motivation, I don't think flies anymore in the broad scale of things. So that's why I love this question because this person is obviously, or Mikey I should say, is obviously looking to really improve himself yeah. at the moment, which is good. But I think, um, look guys, again, when it comes down to development, um, no doubt the pandemic put a major uh, stop on, 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 on that, okay, on growth. And it did for us as well. Absolutely. You know, we had huge plans for, for last year that got completely shattered overnight. Um, but I think we very quickly recouped and we very, very quickly put them plans back in place. And I think that this, that this pandemic has really separated people um, in terms of who really wants it and, and who maybe doesn't really want it as much, yeah? The people that I see that really want it have actually grown or had more growth in the pandemic than they have outside of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, look, Mikey, the, the best advice I can give you now um, in terms of development, okay, is that when you look at coming into the industry as a barber, you need to stop looking at your value as just being the level of haircuts that you offer. Okay. So. Most people come into the industry, especially new barbers, and all they want to do is learn how to do a skin fade. They think as soon as they can do a skin fade and as soon as they can do a clean crop, they're sweet. Okay? And that's not the case. Nowadays, in 2021, to be a very valuable, um, successful barber, you need to be a lot more than just a very technical barber. Okay? You need to be somebody who has excellent communication skills. Okay? You need to be somebody who has uh, some form of sales experience or uh, can, can potentially uh, learn to sell, okay? Because guys, this industry isn't just about cutting hair. This is a people industry and people buy people. And if you can't sell yourself, I'm sorry, but it's gonna be very, very, very difficult for you to build a clientele. Um, and lastly, I would say uh, digital presence, yeah? So outside of just learning how to become a better barber, which is obviously through practicing doing haircuts, okay? Which look, we can't really do at the moment. But what you need to look at is, what are the other areas that I need to make myself valuable in, all right? And those three areas that I just spoke about are so important to us, so, so important. From a, from a communication level, um, you need to be able to communicate clearly and, and in a very, very, very uh, particular way with clients in 2021 and team members, okay? So, you know, guys, there's so many books out there on uh, communication, yeah, that can help you. Um, Dale Carnegie, one of the best authors yeah. on communication books of all time. Me and Craig have read most of his books at this stage, and they were vital to us in, in, in the early stages of growing. Um, 
like I said, learning to become somebody who can provide service, then learning to become somebody that can provide value outside of just the haircut. And in terms of digital presence, guys, the way this industry is going, I think within five to 10 years, if you're not digitally strong, you're, you're gone. I really, really, really do think that. I think the way we're going with technology is going so heavy from a digital sense that you know, um, the kind of old school, word of mouth style of building a barbershop uh, just won't put the mustard in, 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 in the next couple of years. Um, and, and lastly, from a technical perspective, obviously there's some stuff that we can be doing. Um, mannequin heads. Guys, mm. I put videos of me on my stories at least once a week putting mannequin heads. And trust me guys, I don't need to be doing half as much as you guys need to be doing. You need to buy yourself a stand, a mannequin head, and find yourself some really good online education. There's endless um, platforms out there now in the hair industry that you can use to help um, grow from a technical level. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice. Yeah, and yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head there, to be fair, um, just in terms of learning anything else out of cutting hair, like what you just said about self-development, I suppose you can dwell deep into books and stuff like that. Like Glenn said, learn how to communicate a lot better because communication, I think, is probably one of the most vital things that we've had to learn the hard way over the years. Um, you know, just in terms of being a part of a team, um, trying to run your own shop, um, manage a team, or even just down to day-to-day -to -day talking to clients. If, if, you, if you're not someone who can, can communicate with clients, you need to really, really learn how to be better at that because it's like Glenn said, we're in the we're in the sort of people industry. So we're looking after people all day and the haircuts are just a product that we're we're selling, mm -hmm. I suppose. So I that's heard. probably one of the most I suppose vital pieces of information that we can give is to really, really be better at communication. Mm -hmm. And like we said, there's so many books out there. One of the best ones like what Glenn just said there, going on author called Dale Carnegie is how to win friends and influence people it's probably one of the most strongest books and it will it will last like the, the, the a lifetime really you know what I mean and then just off the, the last point that Glenn gave there with the mannequin heads this is something that I thought like fell to fault for a long time is that because guys I've been cutting hair for 10 years I own my own salon now and um, I've been managing teams for a long, long time now, but mannequin heads is something that I just never really practiced on because I felt as if I didn't need to. Mm. I already have a strong client base, like people are coming in every day, I'm already busy enough, but mm. this lockdown, I've really went back into it. Trust me guys, I can humbly say, I'm <coughs> pretty much useless at it. In terms of where I should be at, I'm useless, and I can hold my hands up and say that I am still learning. Um, Powerful, man. Yeah, it, like if you really overlook that side of it, especially with long hair, you're gonna fall behind, and you will just rely on doing the the sort of more basic shortcuts all day long. But if you can sell yourself in the broader aspect of cutting hair and not just doing fades and short short haircuts, and you can do longer longer cuts, you really add more value to yourself. And when you can add more value to yourself and not just your client base, you can charge more, so you earn more money. And I know money isn't the be-all, end-all of this industry, but at the end of the day, it pays the bills, and that's where you're gonna get your real comfort from. So, um, yeah, just going back to that again, how do you keep learning? I'd definitely say, mannequin heads, read some books, and just try to get better at communicating. 100%, 100%. Um, yeah, do you know what, like, in terms of cutting mannequin heads, I think there's a, there has been a stigma around mannequins for a long time, that they're only used by beginners or newbies or you know whatever you might say yeah. yeah and i think guys i'm gonna let you in on a huge secret here, okay when it comes to becoming very very good at cutting hair and the problem with this industry is that we focus on becoming better at the macro result okay and what i mean by that is we focus on doing haircuts better okay in a broad spectrum but what we don't realize is if you look at the micro elements that make the macro result, which is the haircut, which is your skills, your techniques, your understanding, people fail to work on the entry day and night. Mm -hmm. And they somehow think that 
by trying to become better at skin fading or trying to become better at doing a crop, they're completely missing the mark. Yeah. You need to go back and, and, and hone in, guys, I always say, the basics in this industry is the key to success when it comes to technically cutting hair well, yeah? Um, but like what me and Craig are saying, it's not just about practicing any information. You need to practice the right information, yeah? Um, which is why we're so adamant about doing these um, Q&As every week now and, and putting out tons of free content because, guys, it's bigger than growing Glen McGoldrick or Craig Martha or Men's Sport. We've, from day one, been passionate about growing this industry, especially in Ireland, yeah? Um, anyone that knows us from the early days will, will tell you that we've loved this industry in Ireland from day one, and we've wanted it to get to where it is now for so long. And now that it's here, I think we owe it back to the industry to, to, to help people to, Absolutely. To, to get there, you know? Yeah. But um, another really good question, but let's keep it moving because I want to try and get you as many as possible here today for you guys. And uh, there's some really, really good ones um, in here. We'll do this one next, I think. This one's good. I like this one. So the next question. Prioritize real personal growth or stable money when searching for a shop to work in? Well, it's a great question. Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, this is a very easy question to answer because I feel like that the main point in this is I can see from just the layout of the question that the real personal growth comes first, you know what I mean? And I think that's obviously what's being prioritised here for me anyway. Um, but yeah, stable money goes, it's, it's a short term game. So, I've been there over the years, especially myself, um, being offered jobs in barber shops for more money, but with way less opportunity. And from day one, money never really interested me in regards of how far I want to go because I've always had the goal of, of where I'm at now and kind of where I want to go in life. But like making stable money isn't just going to get you there. It's a short term game. So per, real personal growth is where you want to be at. Um, because I feel like you can go to some shops and you might be on less money, but the opportunity and the development in these shops are endless. Or you can go somewhere where your boss doesn't actually put any time into you, you're just going to be there, come here five, six days a week, and that's how it's going to be for the rest of your time there. And you might become the manager to do the cash up at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to keep this one very short and sweet to be fair. Um, should you prioritize real personal growth over stable money, real personal growth all day long? All day long. What yeah, do you think? 100%. Yeah, I think, guys, like what Craig was just touching on there, is that when you get into this industry, if you focus on the short term, it's, it's going to be probably a job that you last in for five or six years. Because I'm, I'm being real, when you're in this industry and you don't love this job, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. I'm being completely real with you, and I've seen it happen with tons of people. Yeah. So what we need to look at is, you know, are we in this as a hobby or maybe to play around for a year or two or are we looking at this as a long term career? I'm going to speak directly to the people that are looking at this as a long term career because I don't know this industry any other way. From my first week in this industry, I knew this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I fell in love instantly. Don't get me wrong, I've lost passion along the way. Uh, in, in, in certain times, you know, there's, there's an ebb and flow and everything. But what you need to look at is what is going to benefit you in five years' time. And I'll tell you why. Because in this industry, you earn exactly what your value equals. Okay? So what I mean by that is, if you go and join a barbershop, okay, and, well, let's just say you go and join a, a very good barbershop, yeah, a, a company that's run well, the people in that company that earn the most money are generally the most valuable across all areas. Okay? And what I mean by that is they provide value. They provide value to their clients, they provide value to their boss, they provide value to their teammates, they provide value in all areas. Okay? And look, guys, some simple examples of that. Let's say you're a stylist, okay? and let's say you want to you try and add more value to your clients. Maybe you would look at studying how to give a good consultation. 
yeah maybe you would look at learning how to style hair correctly so that you can then teach your clients how to style their own hair for free yeah because that's value okay um let's look at some other areas let's say you want to be valuable to your team uh, do you give free information to your team members do you look to help and build them and develop um, you know are you do you take time out of your day um, to check on your teammates that that or their, their younger teammates and help them develop yeah one thing that we've done with men's for Ireland over the last year is we've focused heavily on caring for each other and guys you can say that that sounds soft or whatever you want to say yeah but I guarantee you that will be or that has been the key to our success so far is that now there's not an ounce of individual uh, growth within the company we grow as a team and we make sure that as a team we're giving each other um, help and guidance in all aspects yeah and I think it's going to be key for people developing in, in, in the industry going forward so and it's just it's just this this comes up a lot in, in the industry and it has done for a very long time and guys I've seen people um, that right now probably could have been managing shops teaching people online with the potential to travel and and educate when we come out of the pandemic that in the short run maybe took an extra hundred euro a week are still in that same position that they were in four or five years ago when if they had have invested in personal growth over money at that particular point in time they probably would have been earning way more money by now yeah so what you need to ask yourself is are you willing to sacrifice your time for value long term or do you want to take the cash now and be happy that's what it comes down to yeah and realistically if you choose the cash of a personal growth especially in the earlier stages of your career or the best advice i could probably give you is to maybe leave barbering because you're going to get a much better wage elsewhere for a much much easier job yep. because Barbering is a hard career, especially at the start when you're just grinding constantly and you're constantly learning. It, it, it is a stressful job. So if you choose money over personal growth or trying to focus on your long-term goals early on in your career, it's going to be a hard career because trust me, it doesn't get any easier. And especially if, if you have that itch that you want to grow, but you choose the money first, it's game over. It's game over. If you ask me, it really is. 100%. It's that important, guys. I, I can't stress it enough. Like, guys, when me and Craig were starting out, it was so hard to get even a job as an apprentice that we used to go and ask people, can we just work in a shop for free to, just to learn, you know? Like, there was, I can't even remember how many shops I had my CV into when I first began, just asking, please, can I just stand and, and watch in a shop for a day, yeah? You know, um, can I just come and just spend a week there just to learn, you know? Guys, now, like, I've spoke to apprentices that are looking to be paid what a senior stylist is paid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and look, guys, it's not that we don't think people should be paid. We pay all of our apprentices. There's companies out there that still don't pay apprentices. Yeah? It's not about that companies don't want to pay you. It's that your value doesn't equal that. That's how it works. You're in a skill-based industry. Your skill is going to equal your net worth in five years' time. So what you want to be doing for the first two years is actually asking yourself, okay, how can I get as much uh, value now so that in five years' time I can earn that back? Like, you know, because when I first moved to, moved to, to Men's Bar, okay, I, I took a 50% uh, pay cut on my wage that I was earning in, in, in Dublin, yeah? 50%, moved to a new city with no friends, and um, luckily I had got my girlfriend Meg with me, but without that, I would have been by myself. And knew that in five years time, that that sacrifice of money and time was gonna pay off. And it did, you know? So please guys, invest in growth, invest in growth, invest in information, find a mentor, find somebody that's gonna give you uh, pure value, yeah? Or if, 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 if you really have to, invest in yourself properly through a very professional uh, education platform or, or company, yeah? Yeah. 
Sweet. I really enjoy that question because it's it's like at men's for development is at the core, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like it's 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 the central thing that we preach to staff is development, development, development. Um without it you you just drown in this industry now. Yeah. Because as well as that, like bro, I think people forget to realise how high of a standard the industry is now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like when we started when you could actually uh, teach yourself on YouTube, you know. Yeah, that was a real thing back then. Yeah, absolutely. You know, being yeah. self-taught was like a badge of honor back then. You know, yeah. now it's not, guys. I look at young barbers these days on Instagram that have self-taught in their bio, and mm. I feel sorry for them mm. because I'm thinking, wow, like, you know, he's gonna spend a year thinking that he's doing the right thing and self-teaching himself, and he could have been spending that year working as an apprentice, mm. not letting his, you know. Being humble, you know, having humility, knowing that you're an apprentice, mm-hmm. because one day you'll be a director, you know. Yeah, and I, I think one thing that me personally like that being self-taught, it's 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 never something that I wore like as a badge of honor. But yeah. one of the biggest mistakes I made from the earlier days, even though there wasn't as many resources, was not spending money. To, to progress a lot faster than what I should have. Like I spent really four or five years getting to a level where I could have been after six months if I had got proper training. Now in saying that, the training back then wasn't great but I really, really could have took a shortcut and been a lot better at cutting hair and all of the other elements of being a busy stylist so much faster. So that's one thing that I would say to anybody out there that hasn't started cutting yet, that's looking to get into it or somebody who has already started and he was hesitant to spend money, I would definitely say don't be shy of spending money and if you are going to spend it, make sure you research where you're going to spend it because there's too many places out there now that will take your money and they'll chew you up and spit you out and you'll be back to square one or you can really, really invest your money wisely and you'll really take that shortcut into where you want to be. Yeah, 100%. I think you like, like what you're saying. Back then, we invested, uh, you know, time into becoming educated. Now you have the option to invest financially. That option didn't exist, guys. The level of education that was in this country eight years ago was, it was beyond, you know, of, 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 of a low standard, yeah? Mm. You know, now, guys, the, the options are, are, are endless in terms of where you can go to invest. And it's, you either invest your time for, for, for information or you invest financially for information. I recommend doing both. I recommend looking, you know, guys, if I was 17 or 18, if you're 17 or 18 listening to this, you should be texting 10 barbershops today, asking them, can you come and work for free post pandemic, two days a week. And with, trust me guys, regardless of the shop. Now you will get a lot of people that will actually take you on and let you watch for free. Whereas back in the days when me and Glenn were texting all these people, not even texting, more so handing in CVs, that's how, that's long, long, that's that's how long it was. How <laughs> It's where you were asking for a thousand euro a week to, to stand and watch for free because so stand up. Like the, um, I, I wouldn't even be able to count how many barbershops that I handed in CVs to ask to watch for free. Absolutely free, nothing in return. And you get no every time. Shut down. You literally get no every time. So you, there's endless opportunities. To, if you want to go watch for free, I guarantee you most people will, will take it. Whereas Back then we just had not got the opportunity and guys really like Glenn said if you're 16, 17, 18 watching this do it today. Text your favourite barber and ask and don't you don't really even have to text the, the shop owner. You could text the barber that's and handy. ask you how to learn. Mm-hmm. Or ask any barber that's even slightly above you. Just to mentor you, give it a bit of advice, give it a couple of tips on how to get to the next level. Okay. Because you don't always have to shoot for the stars in terms of your development right now. If you're someone who's an apprentice only getting into it. Take someone who's only on the shop floor a year, and then when you get to that level, take someone, or you'll be walking someone who'll be able to take you to the next level after that. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many levels to this industry, it's not just going from an apprentice to a business owner within two years. One piece of advice I could give you is just gain the experience, doing everything for a couple of years at a time, mm-hmm. definitely. So true, isn't it? Tran- Absolutely. Tran- transition through the, through the levels uh, wisely, you know? Sick. Enjoyed that one. That was one that I was looking forward to when I read yeah. it initially because yeah. I know I know that the way the industry has gone isn't necessarily in that direction anymore, and that people need to realise more how valuable it is investing some time. Yeah. Cool. This one is good as well. I like this one. I think uh, 
this is funny, man. This, this, this is just something that in the last week I've seen a tremendous amount of. So, guys, this question is from Ask for Loden, and he asked us how to deal with haters from more experienced barbers in your community. Yeah. When, guys, when, when we first got into into barbering, and you know, it was just Instagram. You know, yeah. There was no TikTok. There was no Snapchat. It was just Instagram. There was not even stories on Instagram back then. Yeah. And that, that's how all the way. Yeah. It was literally just posts. Yeah, it stemmed from Twitter as well. Like and, that and Twitter too. Yeah, it was pre-Instagram. Wasn't was it? Yeah. 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 yeah, it was actually Twitter, then Instagram. But the one thing that I think was different back then to now is that there was mass support in the industry. Back then, back eight years ago, when we first used Instagram, the only people that were dishing out hate on social media were people that you could say people already knew that that's how they were, yeah? But what I'm seeing these days, guys, especially from the younger generation on, on, on Instagram and definitely TikTok as well, is this almost desire to nitpick and pull each other down as quick as possible. You know, uh, if you flick through TikTok for half an hour and you go through comments, yeah, which in my opinion is the best way to learn about how to build your, your social media is to actually listen to what's happening out there and see what's going on. Some of the comments I've seen in people's comments absolutely baffle me. It's insane. Crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's like they want to tear each other down. Guys, let me just tell you now. To this day, the people in this industry that are most successful are the most humble, um, have dignity, have compassion and care about each other. I'm telling you now, the people that I know at the very, very top of the industry would bend over backwards to help somebody, yeah? Um, and they're well known for that. The people that from eight years ago that I'm talking about that were dishing out hate eight years ago, guess what? They're still in the same position they were in now. They're still there. I, I, like there's so many of them that, that, that I've seen that haven't moved away from that position that have held on to that negative energy and it's gotten them nowhere. I think one thing as an industry that you guys as beginners need to do is take accountability um, for the next generation and give each other some, some fucking props. Do you know what I'm saying? Like don't be afraid to give each other some confidence. Like when you click onto somebody's video on Instagram or TikTok, Rather than looking for the one thing that they've done wrong, look for the one thing that they're doing good. I'm telling you, it's huge. What you give back, or what, what you give, you get back. Just be kind to each other. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's so undervalued um, in, in the industry in these days. And it worries me if we go back to the first question about trying to build confidence. We didn't have that as a barrier when we were starting, you know this uh, social media hate thing that's gone around, yeah, within the industry. There was no such thing as that. The only thing that would potentially knock our confidence was maybe a bad boss or a bad haircut, you know? Yeah. Nowadays, you know, guys, it, like, you, you have to remember, you could give us hate on a post all day long and it's not gonna affect me in the slightest, you know? I, I'm well aware of my skill set and I'm well aware of where I am and, you know, Thankfully, at this stage in the industry, um, I'm not going to waste time trying to convince somebody to do something or believe in something that I believe in because I'm, I'm that sure of where I am. But what I do worry about is a 17, 18 year old apprentice that is really trying to build themselves on, on social media and all of a sudden their confidence is being absolutely shredded by this stigma in the industry of, of trying to critique each other. You know? So look, my message is just, guys, honestly, being kind is way undervalued in the industry uh, at the moment. Where would you stand in that part? Yeah, so with this whole hate thing, obviously I haven't signed up for TikTok yet, just yet. Me and Glenn were talking about this a few minutes ago. Mm. So in terms of what I see from young barbers, it's all through Instagram. And I think Instagram is much more professional and it's much more supportive. But much more. I'm actually going to be signing up to TikTok this week, funnily enough, just to kind of get the ball rolling with that. But um, well, you can understand it completely. I don't even have to say it to know it because I've had that before. And mm -hmm. trust me, from the people, like Glenn said, the people who would have tried to ridicule us a couple of years ago and try to give a bit of stick, these are the ones that are still earning the exact same wage for the past 10 years. And there's just no growth. 
just full of negativity and we'll probably be just doing that for the next 10 to 20 years if they don't give up on Marvin in the meantime. But mm -hmm. anyway, instead of dwelling on the negativity too much, if there's people out there that's giving you a little bit of stick, especially from more experienced lads, or just completely ignore them, I'll block them, to be fair, because one thing that I really find important about, especially earlier on in the career, is either don't give out stick, or if you do give out stick, wind it in now, because trust me, these same people that are coming up with you, if you burn bridges now, that will completely take away your advantage of either yeah. working with this person, working for that person, or that person working for you. Trust me, because a lot of people, a lot of younger lads especially, everyone's dream is to open up their own barber shop or, or manage a good barber shop. And trust me, even if you're not the owner of a barber shop, if you're only managing a barber shop, you're still scouting for staff. And especially as a salon owner, if you're if you're somebody who has given stick over the years to other younger barbers or people the same age as you, and a couple of years down the line you're looking for five or six staff members, your choices are going to be very, very, very slim. Whereas on the opposite of that, if you flip that around, if you're somebody who just gives out pure love and pure support at the start, the opportunities are endless in a couple of years. Me personally, and I know Glenn personally, have never, ever, ever given out any stick or hate, especially when it comes to hair cutting. And trust me, the, the amount of people that we have come up with asking us for jobs, or, or not even that, if they own their own salons, are still so supportive of us because we've been supportive to them, you know what I mean? Um, so I just think in a nutshell, if you're somebody who gives out hate, it's really not going to stand to you in a few years. And if you're somebody who receives hate, who receives hate, just ignore it. And trust me, mm -hmm. the more love you give out, the more love yeah. you'll get back. Yeah, so true. Like, like that, I think just, like in terms of receiving hate, guys, look, like everybody will be impacted when somebody makes a comment on them, yeah? But if somebody has taken the time to watch a video and then leave a hateful comment, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, like, you know, if you want to spend three minutes watching my video or liking my photo and then you want to leave a hateful remark on it, you know, there's something wrong with that person, not with you, yeah? They're on the defense, right? You have to remember, if you're always on the attack, you don't have time to defend. That's the way I look at it. And as a young barber stylist, in I don't mean on the attack as in giving hate, I mean being on the attack in terms of development and getting shit done, having action, yeah? If you're so busy attacking everything all the time, you know, making sure that you're getting better at cutting hair and keeping yourself preoccupied with becoming better, you won't even have time to defend. You won't be concerned about it, yeah? So, yeah, that would be my advice. And ju just off the back of that, just quickly as well, like, if you're somebody who gives out support and, and receives support, it doesn't all just have to be digital either, guys. Mm. And I know that we're, got, we're going through a pandemic at the minute and we shouldn't be cutting hair, and most of us aren't cutting hair. But you have to remember, this will pass, and the same people who are supportive of you and you're supportive of them, you could eventually meet up on your day off, and the same person who might have said, um, your face are shit, whatever, they're never gonna learn and they're never gonna get support. Whereas if somebody comes along and says, do you know what, bro? I actually think your fades could be a little bit better. Let me show you how to do it a little bit better because I'm actually decent at fading. And that same person who might be good at fading probably can't use the scissors as well. And if you're somebody who can use the scissors, you're going to teach them how to cut hair, with, cut hair better with mm -hmm. scissors. So in turn, wow. you're really going to be benefiting each other just from giving the support digitally, digitally first and then I suppose in person next. And that's how you will grow. And even if you don't grow to work with these people in a couple of years time, again, it's just gonna be all support. Because again, me, myself and Glenn, there's some people who we have never ever worked with who own their own salons now. And when we're too busy, we're gonna send some of our clients or some walk-ins to their salon hmm. and they're probably gonna do the exact same. So guys, it's, the support is endless and it, and it stays on forever. And because even though it might be something that seems so Smarty at the minute, trust me, it goes such a, such a long way. So, mm. really, I think the biggest thing you can take from this is just 
push all the hate and the negativity aside and just focus on the positivity. It's it's more so a mindset switch and like once mm. once you do understand that, the negativity won't even phase you. Yeah. And guys, don't don't respond in my opinion. Yeah, just ignore it, you know. Guys, we've like look, guys, as a as a global brand at Mensport, we get more hate on a daily basis than, than any other brand. And in our opinion, you know, we, we, we haven't ever responded to it because we don't have to. You know, as far as we're concerned, we do our talking on the football pitch. Yeah, like it's all well and good before the match in the, in the tunnel having words to say about each other. But who goes out and scores ten goals at the end of the day? And that's us. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm so confident that we do that. that I don't really care if you wanna if you wanna uh, say something. You know, uh, on Instagram, if you wanna say something about our brand, I don't really care because at the end of the day, I'm so confident in our ability that it doesn't really. Uh, phase me and, and, and I think that's what I would say to you guys but like what Craig said give love and, 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 and receive love it's as simple as that you know um, cool that's a, that, that's a big question though isn't it I think mm-hmm. I think it's it's something that I see as a real threat to the industry going forward that I hope changes but like, like I don't think it's going to I think, I think the way social media has gone in the last five years it's naturally went in this direction just so happens that it's gonna be involved in, in every industry and, and I think it's important that we learn how to deal with it, you know? Cool, next question, this is a good one. I mean, this is very, very broad, but I think it's very important because I'm hoping that 90% of you guys listening today are beginners or looking to get into the industry. And this is a real question because I think we can focus as much on, you know, um, development and how you need to offer your time for development as well that is extremely important but there does come a time when you need to put food on the table yeah and that's a very real thing you know maybe when you're 17 18 19 you can work for free but when you get to being 22 23 24 you need to earn money so this question is from Nomis Barber and he's asked what's your best advice on growing a clientele base in the early days Craig I'm gonna let you start this one off yeah one moment, just yeah sweet um, yeah, I think this is a great question, and I think that it's a question that there's not enough clarity on. Um, again, because I see a lot of technical haircutters who are great at cutting hair, who still haven't got a very, very strong client base. And for me personally, I think this is too much focus on one area of the industry, i.e. technical ability and trying to do the best haircut. Um, what I think is if you put enough time, and uh, and try really hone in on the skills of being an all-round barber again communication um, and just your own development I think this is where it really comes into play so my advice for growing a clientele base outside of the, the cutting hair part obviously you need to be good at cutting hair before you grow any clients but I just say it is client care. So client care, i.e. consistency with every haircut. Um, so if somebody comes into you and you give them a 10 out of 10 haircut one week, and the next week you might be a little bit busier and you feel as if you gotta get through a lot of clients, don't just rush somebody's haircut the next time because then that's inconsistency, inconsistency and you're basically giving away your own value. So that one client that comes in, if you give them a 10 out of 10 haircut every single time, they're not just gonna keep that to themselves, guys. They're gonna go and tell their best friend, they're gonna tell their brothers, they're gonna tell their fathers, they're gonna tell whoever, everybody they work with. And in turn, if you use a correct system, like we use, we use cards called uh, recommended friend cards. So what this does is, it gives the person who hands over a, a card a discount, and if they give a card to a friend, it gives the friend a discount. Mm-hmm. So that encourages someone to bring a friend and that friend will then in turn once they're happy with their 10 out of 10 haircut and their service they're going to give it to another friend and it just snowball effects guys so Mm -hmm. yeah in a nutshell i would definitely say when you're starting off the small client base that you will have your close friends your family really 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 look after them and they'll really look after you and and how they will really look after you is they will go and tell everyone and Again, just off the back of that, it's something that I always kind of, it was a big weakness for me that I'm focusing on at the minute is definitely the digital presence. So 
if you've got a really strong social media game, a lot more people are going to see it. Again, because what Glenn said a, a little while ago that word of mouth I don't think will be as strong in a couple of years time. So if you've got a good digital presence, but yet your client care is very, very good, I think you'll, you'll be fully booked in, in no time. Trust me. Mm, I think it's, bro, like what you're saying there, right? And the reason why, why I thought this question was going to be big for us is because, like what you were just saying, you've been, like, in terms of local marketing, that's been your, like, you've been fully booked since day one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I remember going up to Craig Martin's bedroom mm. six years ago and there was eight people on the bed waiting for a trim. Yeah. You know? Uh, charging five euro a pop. You know, we used to think we were loaded. Yeah, yeah. stay yeah. humble, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, trust me, beginners are charging 25 yeah. these days. Me and were char charging a fiver back in the day. A fiver. It's insane. And trust me, guys, I was charging a fiver for about three years. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that can back me up on that. Yeah. So yeah. stay humble and know your worth. In saying that, it was only about 50 quid for a pair of white Air Force back then. Yeah, true. true. It's a wonder now. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, so look, guys, on, in terms of building a client base, right, there's there's two ways that, that Craig touched on. You've got digital and you've got local. Local marketing, no doubt about it, will always have a place in building barbershops because it's a, it's a community-based business, yeah? And a community-based business generates business from people telling each other, yeah? You know, everybody has a very good local barbershop or coffee shop that they use probably on a daily or weekly basis. And they can probably name five or six friends that, that use them as well. And you can be guaranteed that that business came from people telling each other about it, yeah? But where we're heading, guys, in terms of the future and where we're going in terms of uh, building ourselves, digital is going to be huge. And it already is, guys. Mm -hmm. Instagram is massive. It's huge in terms of building your, your, your client base. So... When it comes to building a client base, guys, you need to divide it into digital and local, okay? Like what Craig said about local. When I first went to Men's Square, one of the best things that Sam, uh, Samuel Palmer, right, who was the uh, co-founder of Men's Square, over in London did, was he handed me a stack of cards and told me to go into the town centre and introduce myself to, to people. And guys, I shit myself. Mm -hmm. yeah? I'd never handed a business card out in my entire life. The way I had built my clientele back then, was true friends and, and, and like that word of mouth. But guys, the impact I had, that grew my clientele exponentially, so much so to the point that I became one of the one of the busiest stylists in that shop within about six months. I literally discovered a gold mine. I didn't I didn't realise that I could actually just ask somebody to come and get a trim. I didn't think it was that simple. Guys, the people that go out and hustle in the early days are the people that build the biggest clientele. And the people that are the nicest people have the biggest clientele. I always say it, but I've seen very technical barbers not get busy. And I've seen very untechnical barbers get very busy. And the difference every time was the person themselves and how they uh, chose to communicate, how they chose to express themselves, um, and how, how they chose to, to be on a day-to-day -day level. Now, separate to that, okay, um, in, in your early days, local marketing is going to be huge spreading the word between friends and using your network to create net worth is huge but if you want to build a, a brand and you want to build something that has longevity and you want to build a real business that has you know maybe four or five salons maybe ten you need to be strong digitally you have to be there's actually no exception anymore. Up until a few years ago, you still had a choice of whether you wanted to be on social media or not. You don't have that choice anymore. If you want to be in this industry, you have to be on social media. There's no two ways about it. And you need to be... Um, if, you're, if, if I was a barber and I was 17 again and I had um, TikTok and Instagram the way they have it now, I would be making videos... Um, tomorrow about teaching people how to style their hair or I would be creating uh, you know choose A or B scenarios between two haircuts that I've done or I would be doing before and afters and I would be creating a piece of content every day based on that and pushing that out on my social platforms because I guarantee you that people are going to see it and that, that because you're providing value on the back end 
you're gonna get the clients first. And I know that for a fact because it's something that we've done at Men's Sport from day one. Um, cool. That was a good one. I really enjoyed that. Very good one. Yeah. 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 Um, guys, I think to be honest with you, we're gonna leave it there because I think we've covered pretty much everything in in in, in those couple of uh, of of questions. You know, I think we've touched on everything from uh, personal development, you know, to social media development, um, and so on. But um, yeah, guys, look, I think with this sort of stuff that we're doing. The main aim for us here is genuinely to provide value to the next generation of barbers within the industry. Because I don't doubt that in 10 or 15 years time, there's gonna be a new brand, there's gonna be a new men's bar that comes along and is revolutionary to the point that the industry changes again. I don't doubt that that's, that that's gonna happen. And I think in 10 years from now, I would love to say that we were able to benefit the industry in, in getting to where they are. And, and guys, genuinely, it comes from a place of, of passion that, you know, me and Craig always used to speak about it, that it was so hard to get information eight years ago that it was painful, you know, that now that I think we have such an opportunity to spread this value for free to the next generation, I, I think we will be doing the industry a massive disservice by not providing it. Yeah, absolutely. And as well as that, just to remember, like, the reason why we hadn't got so many resources back then is because we hadn't got stuff like this like instagram and um, obviously we had twitter and small little things like that but the platform just wasn't strong enough and there wasn't as many barbers and there wasn't as any barber shops like this it was all just small local barber shops it was it was a very kind of old school mindset that nobody really wanted to help each other in terms of growth so like you wouldn't have you wouldn't have Barber down the road here with the other one down the road. They yeah. weren't helping each other. No. They were competing. Mm -hmm. And I think myself and Glenn and all the Barbers that started when we started, we're just tired of that. Because like we said, we tried to get into all these barber shops to watch for free and we weren't given the time of day. So we actually had to try pave the way for ourselves. So we know how hard it is to actually try get these opportunities. And that's why we're doing things like what we're doing now. Me and Glenn have taken like two hours out of our day. We're not going to benefit from this but we just want to be able to give the opportunity that we hadn't got in order to revolutionize the industry even more. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think it's been a big mission at Men's Forest from day one. And I think luckily, you know, with the current situation the last year, I think what's, what's really compelled me to do this is seeing a deflation of, of energy across the board in the industry. And, and I think that we need to really work on, on, on uplifting that. And I think that we really need to work on the next generation having a real opportunity post pandemic to make a real important start in, in, in their career. But guys, final words, please. Be the apprentice, enjoy that position. Be humble, have humility, have integrity, treat each other well, be kind. And I guarantee you in five years time, you will be in a very strong position. I really do. Yeah. And ju just off the back of that, just exactly what Glenn said there, enjoy the process of it all. Because trust me, the experience that you will get out over the next couple of years is really going to determine where the rest of your career goes. Um, again, if you can spend like the, the least amount of time in hindsight you spend in each of these, the less experience you're going to have. So if you, if you are in these positions, like the apprentice, like a junior stylist, really focus on what your roles and duties are as and really try not just be the best barber try to be the best apprentice the best junior stylist the best stylist the best senior stylist because the more you can hone in on your skills in each little one and you nitpick all of the best things that you can get from each position trust me it will stand to you in 10 years time because mm -hmm. me and glenn will walk into a salon our own salons now and we will still be the apprentice you will catch us sweeping the floors changing the bins cleaning the toilet on our hands and knees scrubbing the floors and trust me guys that stuff just doesn't go away mm -hmm. and we still appreciate that really I, I love coming in to do those small little jobs because yeah. it's something that was really pressed on us as apprentices and it will just stick to us to this day yeah so important mm. play every role yeah the best ability enjoy the process guys. The, guys the best even still to this day, the people in the industry that I know are the most successful were, were, were the best apprentices. Yeah. Guys, listen, I think we, 
we'll call it there. I think we've got a lot of, I think we've just ran over the hour mark, so I want to make sure that we have we leave enough time to upload this to IGTV. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope that you've benefited in some way. Um, and we're going to continue to, to deliver free content for the sake of the industry. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.